What's going on guys, the Inhuman Beat Dan, I'm back with more Kamen Rider Bat Ride War Genesis. Now I bet you're wondering how you get all those empty squares that you have on the character select screen. Well, good news is you had to have beaten the game anyways to get them. So what you have to do is continuously keep replaying the final mission. Uh, the good news is it can be done on any difficulty. So jack that baby down to easy, by the way beating the game unlocks very hard in hell difficulty. Uh, but jack that baby down to easy and go to town on the final mission. Now, to do this, you'll have to beat this mission with several specific characters. So we'll start with the first one. You're going to need Decade. And you must be playing as the rider. They cannot be your secondary rider to unlock the character. So, I recommend bringing your character and someone strong with you. In this case, I'm going to be bringing with me uh, Ghost, actually. Matter of fact, we'll just pop back here and there we go. Jet him back, jet him up to 30, and we'll play Ghost. So I'm not going to show this screen every time I have to do this. Mostly we're just going to be looking at the unlock screen, so I'll see you then. Beating the game as Decade unlocks Decade Violent Emotion. I'll go more into this character uh, as sort of a standard thing. I will show the unlock and how to uh, unlock the character. I will then explain the character and explain their moves in the following video. So, uh, take it away, future me. Before I go into explaining violent emotions, before someone says, oh, What's the difference between Decade and violent emotion? They look exactly the same. Um, if you paid attention, you'd actually know that they aren't. Notice around the head, that's where the difference is. The little gold spot at the top of Decade has now turned purple, and the eyes have a much more sinister look to them, being now pointed at the edges, instead of the more rounded shape that Decade has. Violent Emotion Decade is Decade after he has accepted his role as the Destroyer of Worlds. Seen at the end of the, uh, or seen at the end of Decade during the Decade double movie. Uh, I've noticed, uh, I've told now the physical difference between Decade. The other difference is, aside from fighting style, is that uh, he's got basically the same moves when it comes to it. Except for one major difference. His attacks are slightly different. And now he has access to all of his rider cards at the start. He does not have to pick them, and that's because he now no longer turns into them. He merely copies their move. Uh, let's see, what is his air glide? Same, just a cut. So here we have just sort of a swing with the sword, much different. He summons a rocket launcher. Fies has the uh, hit. Blade has the electric sword strike. Hibiki has the drums. Kabuto, the rider kick. Dino has his sword. Kiva has the rapid punches, and so on. Uh, so yes, there is quite a bit different about this. Also, just as a normal note, uh, Violent Emotions is uh, just start starting off a lot stronger than normal Decade. Thus is because now he f uses his own power. He combines it instead of trying to use someone else's. Um... The other difference is now when he does his dimension kick, he no, he no longer brings up the cards to juggle his enemies. He merely teleports and does it instantly. And that's because his ultimate is also the dimension kick. But in a different style of uh, finisher. But yes, that's Violent Emotions. The true destroyer of worlds, Decadoa. Beating the mission as the end unlocks AR Kuga, otherwise known as the Kuga from Decades uh, series. And I'll go more into that in, a just, in just a second. While he may look like normal Kuga, I assure you he is actually not. This is the Kuga of Decade, otherwise known as AR Kuga. Whereas the original Kuga... Kuga is named, uh, what is it, Yosuke Godai? This is Yosuke 
Enodaya or something like that. It starts with like an I and has a different thing. Different last name. Unlike uh, unlike the regular Kuga, he's much more like calm and less eager to fight. And uh, he accompanies Decade, not doing a lot of fighting, fighting, but acting more of as a moral compass and help to the other riders that they come across. Kuga's difference in here in the game is that he can charge attacks, but he does not have access to his mighty forms. So he cannot change in that pers in that uh, way. He does, however, ac have access to his other forms. But, unlike regular Kuga, he can go into his ultimate form as a regular change. Though this is not the normal ultimate form. This is called Controlled Black Eyes Form. During the events of uh, Decade's summer movie, it is revealed that Decade is in fact the leader of whatever brand of Shocker they had at that time. Kuga is put under control and turned into this form to hunt him down and kill him through most of that movie. Thus also why his flames are purple. The charge attacks now allow him to char... Uh, the charge attacks now serve as to unlock this form. I believe you need four hits to get this form. And it has uh, pretty much similar powers as uh, to what the other ultimate form has, except now it's a regular form. Also, unlike regular Kuga, AR Kuga goes one step beyond. Red-Eyed Rising Ultimate Form. I believe after shaking his mind control, he transforms into this super state. A much stronger form that not even regular Kuga achieved. Until one of the movies where I guess one of the directors or someone fucked up and gave it to Kuga. Despite the fact that he didn't have it. But yes. This is a much more powerful form of the ultimate state. Uh, outside of a few, a few moves and some flashy attacks. Uh, he's got some uh, pretty unique attacks. But that's pretty much the difference between the two. Before anyone says that. It's like, oh, they're just sick of fucking copies or whatever. Blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. Shut up. Learn your lore. Dumbasses. Beating the game as, as double Cyclone Joker unlocks Kamen Rider Joker. Enter in the hard-boiled detective, or at least in his own mind, Kamen Rider Joker. As you can guess, this is a Shotaro without Philip, using a lost driver to transform into Kamen Rider Joker. During the events of his summer movie A to Z, uh, they are attacked by Kamen Rider Eternal. We'll get to him soon enough. Uh, Eternal uses his Gaia memory, uh, Eternal, to shut down all T1 Gaia memories. There's something about T2s that they were using and they were stronger or better. Some shit, I don't really know. Basically, it crippled Double and made it to where he could no longer use any of his Gaia memories. Distraught and unable what to do, Shotaro is attacked by one of Eternal's minions who are looking for the T2 Gaia memories so that they could, uh, destroy- so that they could basically turn the world into undead zombies like themselves. Through what I can only guess is a dream or fever dream, uh, Shotaro's mentor, the boss, otherwise known as Kamen Rider Skull, leaves his lost driver for him, but also vanishes. Like, he doesn't actually show up or say anything. He shows up, doesn't say anything, and then just fades. I don't really know how to interpret that. But, as it happens to be, the one last guy in memory that they were looking for just happened to land in Shotaro's office, and it was the Joker. Using it, he now transforms into Kamen Rider Joker. Uh, as per Joker's usual combat style, he's all hand-to-hand -hand combat. And in here, Shotaro is much cooler and much calmer in his uh, approaches. He's got several different attacks uh, that can be used. Here we go. Scroll down. Yeah. All right. 
He has a typical combo that he can use. Holding square does a rider kick, which he calls out for. Uh, of course, jumping in the air also performs a rider kick. Uh, triangle is a steady uh, attack of kicks. Because, yeah. Uh, o is his rider punch, which can be charged. And finally, triangle and O is the rider is the rider kick, a dash. He runs forward and then kicks. And of course, he has a secret hidden ability. Count up your sins. This apparently increases agility and costs 25% of his gauge. There we go. Now I got it. So now I'm more agile and it would have cost me part of my uh, gauge had I not beaten the game and gotten a really good figure. Anyways, from there we can now, we'll just go ahead and show off his uh, ultimate, which is the Rider Punch Kick Combo. Which I need some uh, volunteers. There we go. Volunteers found. He goes into a string of combos and attacks. And I believe he only follows up with the kick if he actually hits someone. If he doesn't, he won't do the now count up your count up your sins line or the uh, rider kick. But yeah, that's coming Rider Joker. Right up, punch. Beating the game as Double Fang Joker unlocks Eternal. Going back once more to the uh, Kamen Rider Double Summer movie, we have its villain. Probably one of the only, like, evil Kamen Riders playable. Uh, I mean, unless you count Baron. But, anyways, he's still one of the only movie writers playable. Uh, or the only movie writer playable. Basically, Eternal Story goes like this, and I will try to abridge it. He serves as the main antagonist for the uh, summer movie of Double. He wants the T2 Gaia memory so that he can uh, basically turn the world into undead zombies like he is. He was a project by the Foundation, the main bad guys of Double, uh, to create mercenaries that could basically not die because they were already dead. Uh, as one of the soldiers from this, it was kind of a failed project. They went into Foundation of Gaia memories, but he lived on. Uh, he obtains the uh, Eternal Gaia Memory, and with the help of a Lost Driver, becomes Kamen Rider Eternal. Uh, he then later plagues plagues them through all of the movie, basically being super evil. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So, in terms of combat, Eternal is probably one of the best characters in the game due to battles alone, and that's because most of his attacks can chain together. So... Let me actually flip to the right page. Alright. So. From here he has access to a couple of attacks. Just some cuts, some kicks. Holding X, he does a rising attack. Which can be chained from pretty much everything. Or it can't be linked from other specials understandable considering what most of his specials are aerial slashes helm breaker and revolver i don't know how that's a revolver but it is triangle is a rapid set of punches that he can perform and o is a jumping dash thrust Which makes it real easy to do something like this. <laughs> also, his rider kick has probably the best name that the wiki has given anything so far. And that is Bloody Hell Blade to Eternal Requiem Kick. And that is the attack. 
Uh. Uh, release your hold Okay, well, so yeah. Alright, now he does have an additional skill. Uh, he has access uh, to several Gaia memories. Now, this wasn't shown in the show, but he can use them to augment his powers. Using heat, he adds fire damage to his, uh, to his additional thing. Or basically, it just makes him stronger. It, well, it says gives a fiery attack. Also, all these skills are unlocked at level 25, except for his first one. Metal uh, gives an armored state, so he doesn't flinch. Uh, let's see, where's the next one? There it is. I have to go meet up with Dino so that I can continue to properly showcase these. Luna uh, creates, uh, or Lunar creates uh, clones to attack. And finally, Trigger, well, does like a uh, shooting attack somehow with a knife. And finally, he has Eternal, doing what it does in the show. Paralyze. Which I guess is okay. Uh, well, it is unblockable, so I guess that's why it's good. Um, I'm not actually sure if those come back or not. Or how long it takes for them to come back, but yeah. Also, an added uh, bonus cool thing is that while he doesn't have a bike to run, he uses Axel to run. Because that's kind of cool. But yeah. Uh, from there, let's talk about his ultimate. In the movie, he uses all of the T2 Gaia memories to try and construct a laser that'll dis that'll turn everyone into undead zombies. When that doesn't work, thanks to the intervention of Double, he uses one of the Gaia memories called Zone. Zone pulls all of the Gaia memories to him, noticing all the slots on him, which are actually maximum drive slots. And so, he absorbs them all and becomes a deadly force to be reckoned with. Kind of like this. And there's the green energy of death thing. In this state, some of his moves have now changed. Uh, his basic combos are the same. His triangle is now a long-range blade of death, which at high levels can instantly fuck up bosses. It's amazing. His O attack is now a chargeable slash. Depending on how long you charge it depends on how high the radius is or how far the radius is. And finally, his uh, his rider kick has been changed. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that was, an that was a uh, ride spread attack. His rider kick is now to charge up the uh, orb attack as seen in the movie and fire it depending on how long he charges depends on how big it is and that thing goes slowly and can hit multiple times eternal is by far one of the best characters in the game because of his raw power and combo potential and that rounds out our list for playable unlockable characters. There's still some support characters who can also be unlocked, and we'll go ahead and take a look at them next. Beating the mission as Zeronus unlocks our first uh, support hero, and that's New Din O, or Cho Din O, despite New is even in his Japanese name. Try to wrap your head around that one. All right, so now we're having a look at uh, New Din O who is the future grandson to Den-O. He shows up during one of the movies because uh, Ryotaro has been possessed by an evil Imagin. And with Xeranus not being able to stand up to them, they have to call in help from the future. New den uh, unlike the others, are not possessed by an Imagin. In fact, his Imagin is his sword, Teddy. He's kind of calm and hot-headed from time to time, trying to prove he's the best. 
I'm gonna try and show off his skills. Uh, let's see. That combo's not gonna hit anything. But it just looks like a string of slashes. That was the absolute wrong way to go, you dumbass. There we go. Let's see if I can get him to pull this one off. What is this? His rider kick. Alright. And the last one would be his rider glide, but I don't think I'm going to get that. I don't think I'm going to pull that off before I have to go and see Dino. Which will, unfortunately, replace him. But I... The, the thing with support characters are, if you fight with them long enough, you're going to see all of their moves. Anyways, there we go. I got to see it. Oh, good. And he, again, ran the wrong fucking way. Cool. I'm glad this has worked out. All right. Let's go on to the next support hero who's going to disappoint me. Beating the game as Kiva unlocks Dark Kiva. Original OC, do not steal. Breaking the mold, Dark Kiva is actually not a movie villain. He is, in fact, uh, I guess what could be called the final villain of the series of uh, Kiva. He is actually Kiva's uh, technical stepbrother, Taiga, who is king of the Fangari. He views humans as less than them and only to be used for food by the Fangari. Uh, he originally shows up as Kamen Rider Saga. Well, that's creepy. Uh, though he's bested eventually by Kiva's emperor form. Wondering, uh, well, not wondering, but eventually finding their mother, uh, he demands that he be given the dark Kiva powers, which originally belonged to his father. Uh, he eventually kills his mother and obtains these powers and becomes dark Kiva. Eventually, they work things out, and he's no longer evil. But, yeah, that's the that's the epitome of his character there. A dick. A douchebag. All right, let's take a look at his moves. Regular combo. Okay, about what I expected. Special attack. Oh, yeah, his wake-up one, which is just the rider kick. So, a disappointing thing. All of his wake-ups are just labeled numbers. And finally, Rider Glide, which is just a kick. Okay. He's got some other moves that I can't actually show off, unfortunately. But that's just that's just because of how the game works. I can only force him to do so much, uh, regrettably. But yeah, like I said, if you work with the support characters, you'll eventually just see all of their moves. Uh, eventually, just from watching them. So, yeah. Uh, though we're not done in the realm of Kiva yet, we have another Kiva to go, or another Kiva character to go through. Beating the game as Ixa unlocks Ixa. The, uh, past Ixa. Is, what, what is his name? Um, uh, 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 nope, doesn't give me a name, it just gives me a year. Uh, the 1986 Ixa. All right. Next on our list is Old Ixa. And this is going to get real confusing real quick. So, as I've briefly mentioned a couple times for those who haven't seen Kiva, Kiva is split up into certain segments. It often flips rups from telling the story of the present to events in the past as they all somehow eventually connect to one another. Basically, the Ixa of the past was in a prototype state, not having its enhanced version that uh, the Ixa now does. The Ixa of the past is also used by, well, actually multiple people, but I believe the current host for the game right now is actually Kiva's dad. Um, and from there, I guess there's not much else to talk about ex until we get to, uh, until I get enough uh, points to actually show off some of his moves, so I guess. Go, combo. He also doesn't have the Ixa caliber, I just realized. Alright, we'll wait for this guy to die. And then I'll have him use his finisher on this one. Which is just the knuckle. No surprise. Oops, I gotta... I gotta slow down. I'll try to build up enough points again to use the... Uh, hit to see what his Rider Glide is. Or his... Yeah, Rider Glide. I think that's the right term for it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not I'm not expecting anything grand. Alright, there we go. Let's see. 
Yeah, it's just the knuckle again. That's, uh... Well, I mean, to be expected. They are just support heroes. Beating the game as Kamen Rider Joker unlocks Skull. Yes, you have to use an unlock that you beat the get to an unlock from beating the game to unlock another unlock. It's weird like that. Back in the realm of double and it's time to look at Skull. This is actually the boss uh, referenced throughout the show. Shotaro's uh, boss that he looked up to who also dies during the events of Begins Night. Um, it's never really explained much about who or what he is until the Begins Night movie, or at least the uh, movie with uh, Decade where they explain Begins Night. And it's not even until then that we know he's a common writer. Uh, basically, as it goes, which is explained in two movies, Skull hogs up a lot of doubles movies, unfortunately. Which I guess is okay, but I'd have kind of preferred that information be in the actual thing. It's kind of a sad, he, sad, uh, it's kind of sad he isn't. Anyways. Uh, basically, he's a hard-boiled detective. Everything that Shotaro looks up to, and the reason why he, uh, wants to be a hard-boiled detective like him. Uh, he's a great detective and uses, uh, weapons and the Gaia memories, including the Lost Drivers, developed by Shroud, the woman who, uh, also gave this stuff to Axel, though she's much less of a bitch back then. Though, I, to be fair, she's still kind of a bitch. Um, let's see. From there, I guess the only other time we see him, uh, aside from flashbacks, is when the dummy Dopant is using his power to bring him to life and make him evil. But yeah, that's it. He's kind of a mix of melee and gunplay. So, basic combo. Aw, oh, his rider kick got interrupted. Speaking of which, rider kick. He summons a skull that yells at them, and then he kicks it at them. Rider glide is just his gun. And yeah, that's uh, that's it for skull. And by the way, yes, double has the most amount of characters in its roster. And finally, beating the game as Zungetsu Shin unlocks Ryugen. Finally, the last support character to look at is Ryugen. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give a big synopsis like I have been with the other characters, and that's just because, I, again, I haven't watched Gaim. I don't know anything about Ryugen except from what I've seen from the Gaim Drive movie. Uh, yeah. He uses the, uh, the grape arms, from what I can guess, and his main attacks are bullets. That's, that's pretty much all I've got. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I apologize. That isn't a lot to go on, but... I mean, it's hard to pull information when I haven't seen it, and I don't want to spoil myself uh, if I ever decide to watch the show. Kind of something the game has already done for me with Baron. <laughs> well, I mean, I already knew Baron's kind of fate at the end, thanks to the Gaim, move, Gaim Drive movie. There you go. Let's see if I can get Mugen's... Uh, points up high enough to show off all of his abilities. Though, I'm pretty sure we've probably seen most of them just from this uh, fight alone. Alright, let's see. Attack combo. Damn it, he got interrupted. Let's see. Basically, basically to build up points, you've just got to stay next to your assist and do attacks. So, let's see if I can just... There we go, he's doing some shooting. All right, let's see what it is. Okay, well. Oh, and he does a rider kick afterwards. Okay, well, he's killed everyone, and I can't show off his rider glide now. But I'm fairly sure it's not that impressive, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And that is all of the additional unlockable characters, both playable and support. And that is kind of where I'm gonna leave it off for now I will eventually do the trials as it were uh, these are the levels unlocked for defeating the shocker scientists 
Uh, these range from decent to hard to... Oh my god, Kiksa, come and save me, you broken motherfucker. Uh, each one of these are unique in their own right. They're not just copy and pasted from something else facing bosses that you don't usually see during the uh, main story. I will be doing them, but uh, I'm uncertain yet if I want to do them all right now or not. So I'll probably feel better. I've been recording like the last seven or eight episodes back to back, so I'm a little burnt out. But they aren't too terrible. The only one that's actually terrible is the last one, and I'll get to that for reasons i'll explain that when we get to them but for now that's gonna be it so until then i'll catch you all later asta